What is up, watch people? Welcome to another edition of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. Today we are going to talk about is Rolex playing games with you. But first, I'm going to do my own little commercial. Uh, all these guys have their commercials. I'm going to do my own. Um, this is my Mont Blanc Heritage uh, based on Minerva. Uh, well, it's a you know heritage model for Minerva. This watch is an amazing watch. I, I really suggest you check them out, man. If you cannot afford a Patek Philippe or a Vacheron Constantin, uh, I suggest you pick one of these up, uh, again, for about $2,400. Uh, they're not cheap, but they're definitely a high-end luxury piece that are extremely well-made, polished, fit, and finished. Um, actually, I put a new strap on it. This is an alligator uh, dark emerald green strap. So that's what I wanted to talk about real quick before I roll the intro. Um, you want really high quality alligator leather straps at like a really good price. And I'm not talking about this fucking Zalande shit that uh, they try to sell you for 175 bucks. I'm going to talk about uh, this particular strap I got off of Amazon. It is genuine handmade alligator calfskin on the inside. Um, I am also, uh, I also put, I have a Vacheron Constantin uh, dual deployant clasp. Um, I used to have a Vacheron uh, regulator, which I no longer had. I had that about 20 years ago. So uh, if that tells you anything about my age or whatever, then whatever. Anyway, I'll just do this. Um, I don't know how it looks. Tell me what you think. Um, salmon dial and I wanted something different. Okay. Um, so this one is made by Vina Creations or Vina Creations. Um, again, this isn't sponsored. I don't get sponsored. Um, I have a small channel of people. Um, this strap is made in Vietnam, but it's handmade and it's alligator and it's genuine and it's really good quality. Um, and it was $25. Okay. Let me go to some other ones I bought. These are from uh, Real Leather Creations. This is a burgundy alligator strap, high gloss, large grain. This I bought for my Cartier tank. Um, beautiful strap, again, uh, genuine alligator. It is handmade. Calf skin on the inside, very soft. And glossed alligator on the outside. This is another one from the same company. Beautiful. This was this one looked really good on my Cartier on my tank, um, and then this one. Okay, these were all about twenty five dollars on Amazon. Okay, not kidding. Uh, you know, if you want to buy an alligator strap uh, for whatever watch, you know, you can spend. You know, well, you can spend. You can go high, um, but you know, three four hundred dollars for a name brand you know i'm pretty sure the strap that came on this the alligator strap would be about three four hundred bucks if i were to to uh, purchase it from mont blanc so having said that let's talk about uh well let's roll the intro and then we'll talk about rolex <laughs> Cool. So, um, you know, some of these channels I watch, you know, um, I, I, that I don't agree with or, you know, they just have kind of bogus information. Yeah, I watch them so you don't have to. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, I'm not going to just point out one particular channel, Paul, Paul Thorpe, Paul, Paul Thorpe. <laughs> um, but geez, man. All right. So the whole thing is, is it seems like there's just so many different stories coming in about how Rolex are doing this, Rolex are doing that, Rolex this and Rolex that. And all these, all these other channels are, are just blaming Rolex, you know. You know I'm, I'm sick of Rolex, this bullshit, you know, and whatever. And then you get this whole, uh, the, one of the newest ones as well. Uh, I, this guy has said he spent 300,000 pounds at his AD, but he's not allowed to buy a Daytona because Rolex will not allow you to purchase more than three watches within a year. Um, all that kind of stuff. I, you know, is it Rolex? You know, why, why is everyone blaming Rolex? Now I get it with, with Patek Philippe. They, they don't care. They just, they, they'll do whatever they're, they, and they're known for being the way that they are. It's not like 
a waiting list. I can just tell you from uh, my AD, I go to Bindi Jewelers in the Glendale Galleria and there's none of that shenanigans going on. You know, all this stuff about Rolex are doing this and Rolex are doing that. Well, granted, I don't work for Rolex. These other guys don't work for Rolex, you know? So what do they know, you know? What all these other people are hearing is basically from their ADs. Now, ADs are all third parties. All Rolex uh, authorized dealers, including the Rolex boutiques, are not owned by Rolex. They're all owned as third party establishments, okay? Um, now, in order to get a franchise or whatever, you know, for Rolex to be able to sell Rolex, they have certain requirements and they're pretty strict, stringent, whatever you want to call it. They, they do have strict rules, you know, you can't just have a mom and pop shop and just decide you want to sell Rolex. It doesn't work like that, unless, of course, you're selling secondhand or whatever. Um, now, having said that, um, you know, some of these things that I hear from uh, these other channels about what, well, my AD says I have to do this. My AD says I have to do this. My AD says I have to walk across my head across the hall to the coffee shop and buy them a coffee and carry the coffee up my ass back to the AD before I can get on the list for a Submariner. I don't understand why I have to do that. They just told me it was Rolex that's, that came up with that rule. Um, you know, stupid shit like that. I mean, it's just really, um, well, you can't get on a list unless you spend $10,000. You can't get on a list or whatever. It's all a bunch of shit. <laughs> okay, so essentially, if you really want your Rolex, again, I've bought it several different places, but I primarily go to Bindi, you know, and really what it comes down to is, keep in mind, I have turned down three Rolexes uh, recently from Bindi, an Explorer, a Seamaster, and a Date Just Wimbledon, which I really wanted, but it was a two-tone, and so I said no. Um, so, I mean, I was getting offered Rolex. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. They don't call me every day saying, hey, we got this model, this model, this model. No, I'm still trying to get an OP. I can't, can't get right now. So, um, but what it comes down to, and I've said this before, and I'll just say it again just to reiterate, okay? If you want a Rolex, don't feel intimidated when you go in there. Go in there with your genuine attitude. How you are as a person is going to mean more than walking in there trying to be fake or walking in there with a Patek Philippe. Walk, oh, I got a Patek. I want a Rolex. Just let you know I'm serious. Just actually go in there and be yourself. You know, establish a relationship. You know, try to get a good conversation going. It doesn't always work. You know, I mean, it's, but at the same time, and I say when it doesn't always work, you don't, two people don't always get along and especially instantly. You know what I mean? You may have to buy another watch or whatever else. You know what I mean? Show that you're genuinely interested in that watch. Simple as that, you know? So, I mean, I've gotten comments, people saying to me uh, on my previous channel, you know, I want this model Rolex and I don't want to have to spend $10,000 on other junk watches I don't want in order to get this one watch. Well, guess what? You don't have to do that because if you don't want any other watches, then pay the little bit of a premium to go buy on the gray market. Go to Chrono24, man, you know? It's simple as that. Don't want to spend $10,000 or $5,000 on other junk or there's no other watches that you like in that store go to the gray market get the one watch you want and that's it be happy be done you know and that's it you don't have to you don't have to establish a relationship with anybody except yourself and whoever you're sending the money to besides right now it's a total freaking buyer's market man watch industry is going down big time you know so uh i guess having said that you know um the bottom line is instead of listening to all watching all these videos that I'm watching um, save yourself and just just all you got to do is if you really want to watch go into an AD try to establish a relationship with them let them know you're genuinely interested in what it would take to get that watch you know I'm in Los Angeles okay so there's several ADs around in sort of local vicinities I mean I, I only go to one I only go to Bindi Jeweler and that's it if you go to Bindi if you're in Southern California go to Glendale Galleria ask for one dude's cool he only wants to sell watches to people that really genuinely want a watch. He doesn't play games. It's simple as that, you know. And if you're cool, you're cool. If you're an asshole, it, you're done. So, um, having said that, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it's what it is, man. Just be yourself. Be honest. You're gonna get a lot further with that just by being yourself. Don't listen to all these guys that are telling you that, you know, you have to stand on your head until the you know, you're, until your face is turning red, go see Cal, go see Cal. Yeah, just give away my age if you remember that TV commercial. Um,
but yeah, so, all right, having said that, again, wearing the green leather alligator strap on my Mont Blanc heritage. Hope you guys have a great rest of the evening. Thanks.